Susitas. Mm -hmm. My name is Rubin Quartin. A little louder. Louder. Yeah. My name is Rubin Quartin. And introduce yourself. I am the video manager. Mm -hmm. Introduce yourself. My name is Nasida. Mm -hmm. My name is Namaya. A little louder. Uh -huh, so. My name is Namaya. My name is Joseph Nipa. I'm Alex Sama. And I'm Gabrielle Zilka. What we're doing is recording a video responding to your questions and uh, we will be having a Google Hangout whereby we will screen this video for you. It's not hard to me personally because as things are going on, every generation things changes. In the olden days for our uh, people who started this religion, it wasn't easy for them. But in our current generation, so far as we are having freedom of worship, each and everyone has the right to worship what he or she likes. So right now, there is no problem between us, the Christians and the Muslims. We leave each and everyone as they are. We don't have problem with them. To me, I have many friends who are Muslims and Christians. And my family, part of them are Christians, but you don't have any problem with them. Great. Right now, we are all looking for peace. And if you are looking for peace, you cannot discriminate people. And to my opinion, as a Jew, I don't discriminate people. No matter how you like, you are, your color, your environment, everything, you remain as a Jew or non-Jew. So if you are a Muslim, you are my brother and you are my sisters. If you are a Christian, you are my brothers and sisters. I'm a Jew, I have brothers and sisters also. We all share the same blood, the same human being. Forget our color. Let us talk about the qualities within us that values or that matters. Because of understanding, that's why you have been a Christian, I have been a, a Jew, and somebody has been a Muslim. That doesn't mean that you are not a human being. You are all one, created by God. The spirit which is within me is the same spirit within you. So let us share things in common. What, will, what, what are the qualities that we need of that will bring peace, love, and kindness so that each and every one may live peacefully? Those are the things I'm looking at. I'm not looking at how your color is because of our grammatical conditions and our traditions and our cultures have changed many things, but I want the qualities within our human beings mm -hmm. that I value. And so, that's what you want to say. Yeah, to that's say. what I want to say to people outside there. To know that we are the same people. So whatever you want to discuss about, think about, in terms of development, education, health, I preach to them that there is no discrimination within us. We love each and every one. So let us come together and live peacefully. What I'm going to add is... And I quite a was saying, you have uh, freedom of worship, freedom of association, freedom of, freedom of everything. So everybody has his right to do what he like it. But when I'm doing a uh, thing, you shouldn't uh, tell me that what you are doing is not good. So what you are doing is good for you. What am I I'm doing is good for me. So everybody has his right to do what he likes. Mm -hmm. So everybody can take what he likes. Okay. Oh, a question for you. It's a question for the children. Oh, right? Mm -hmm. 
ye a crop and a choy and wingo, it ye a swing to die as well. What it can say, you translate him. Can you translate for me? He wants to learn Judaism and he is proud of to study the Torah so that he can follow the ways of God and become a better person, become a good person to each and every one. So his life can change and he will live as a good child. Is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> I want to be perfect in the Hebrew. And he wants to perfect in his Hebrew as Say I that a little talk. louder. I want to be a perfect in the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you like Hebrew? Yeah. So that I can speak in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Like Alex. She said she wants to study Judaism so that she can also teach her children in future. Very nice. Nanaya? She said she wants to study Hebrew and Judaism as they say. Thank you. to go to Israel because it's our motherland. It's a land of Judaism, of Israelites. And the reason why I want to go there is to go there to witness what has been written in the Torah, to share with the people who are over there to know what I'm doing here in Ghana as a Jew. To tell my story to the people of Israel and experience the life of Israel. So I can also say that I have finally entered the land of Israel. So to go to Israel is one of my ideas in future or any time when I get opportunity, I'll go to Israel. Because it's my hometown or my homeland. I have to visit it. What about you, Joseph? We talked a little bit about Israel in your interview. One time, a certain lady came here and he asked me that why I want to go to Israel. But I tell her that it is a promised land for Jews. So um, each and everyone one must be go to Israel. Those they are not Israelis are fighting to go to Israel. Why I am a Jew, I don't want to go to Israel. So when somebody wants to help me to go to Israel, I'm ready to go and visit the land because it is my promised land. What do you think it will be like to see all these places that all you, you've read about, you know? Um, I have been fortunate enough to visit, and it's incredible to see the history right before your eyes. Is that something, you know, you look forward to? Yes. So, I'm ready. <laughs> when I get that opportunity, I'm ready to go and see that the land. Okay. Because, I can, I can remember that Jacob said, I want to go and look my, my, uh, my baby face before I die. Mm -hmm. So I want to go to Israel before, <laughs> before you die. <laughs> well, hang in there, please. <laughs> okay. If it is Friday, my meal is different from the other days. Shabbat is a special day, so I have to make a difference between Shabbat and other days. So on Shabbat, I used to get a pesie or banku, get prepared to at least fish, or any time that I had money, I have a kosher chicken for Shabbat meal. And if you come to my house, things 
will change. If you see the colors in the house, you can see today is a special day. And when I, come, I go to the synagogue, by the time I will reach home in the evening, after evening service, Kabbalah Shabbat service, I will go and meet the candle light. My wife has light the candle. Bread is there, wine is there. So you sight, you pray, you sing, you discuss what is in the Torah before I go to sleep. So those are the things I used to do. If you brought up the idea of kosher chicken, how do you, people wonder sometimes, do you have kosher food here? Um, and if so, how? <laughs> here, you don't have a kosher restaurant or any kosher place that you can get meat or chicken from. But as I have been in Uganda for the past four years, I was trained and I know the process. I learned the process of making a kosher meat and a kosher chicken. So I have a special knife and I know the process which the knife is supposed to pass before you can slaughter an animal. So I know all these things, so I do it by myself. When you see? You mean you? You He said he's so happy for what you were doing and he's proud of. Because as of now, people will get known to him. Yeah. Hmm? Did it feel funny or weird to have people follow you with the camera? Yeah. He's happy. That you are following him. Oh, you are? <laughs> and uh, I should mention that Alex and Joseph were heavily involved in the production, so they were on both sides of the camera. Um, so what was it like to both help and to uh, be filmed? What we are doing right now, I'm so happy and I'm proud of. That at the end of what I have planned for has come to conclusion. Because it was my intention and my dream to do this, but I don't have the equipment. I started some time back, like three years ago. I did written over the history. I got like 10 to 15 pages, but I did not have any, even a copy of picture mm -hmm. or video. So when the time came for us to share ideas together and brought this thing back. I was so happy about it. And I feel... This is David. This is one of the guys that brings our food to us. So if it wasn't for this man right here... We'd starve to we death. We would starve to death. This is dinner tonight. We don't know what it is, but it's going to be something tasty. Made by Mata. His wife. His wife. All right, come on. Thank you, David. Okay, sorry. So, for camera to follow me, take videos, and ask me questions, I'm so happy. And I feel people are also going to know what is going on in our Jewish community here. Whom we are, and what we want to be in future. Thanks to you people for letting this come together. Things that have been separated is what we are now joining it together. Mm. And I know it's going to build a good relationship between us and the outside world. Thank so you. I'm happy you people are following me and asking me questions <laughs> to come up with what you are in need of. That's great. Thank you. The cameras you are doing, you are using me today, I'm a photographer, but I never see some <laughs> in my life. Yes, so, Joseph is a photographer professionally. So I'm very happy. I learned one to mm -hmm. One of you, uh, my sister gave me a book. <laughs> Amanda <laughs> left Amanda her book. Amanda left me a book, but I will learn mm -hmm. to help me in future for Great. my photography. So I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We need three things. 
in my community, our challenges are education. We need education support. Because since we don't have a Jewish school, our children used to go to private schools and government schools. And things are not easy for us, especially in terms of school fees. It's very difficult. The second one is the health. Our health problem is a challenge. Because right now, we try, and even the government of Ghana also implement national health insurance scheme. When you go to the hospital, they will tell you, you need two medicines. One is covered by the insurance, one is not covered. How can you buy? You don't have money. That means the person is going to die. So I'm pleading to the outside world to come and help us. At least to get a small clinic or to get a health fund. When people are sick, you can get some money and take care of them. And that will not even solve the problem. We need business. Any kind of business that you can establish here, that our people can work in to get money. So if they are sick, they go to hospital, they can get money to buy the medicine. Because if you bring us the money to be in our accounts and we take to take care of the people who are sick, I think that cannot solve the problem. What can solve the problem is business. Because through the business, you can get money to take care of the family. And the third one, I need all the people who are looking at us, who are hearing about us, to come and do development in the community. Help us, and we will also help ourselves, because we will not put all our burdens on you. Let us come together, think what can be beneficial to us and to the, uh, the next generation which may come. I don't want you to fish for me. You give me the fish and I prepare food with it, I eat with it. So the next time, if we're not dead, then I will die with hunger. I want you to teach me how to fish. So that when we're not there, I can go to the river side with my hook, catch fish and prepare my food with it. That's why I'm asking about business. My community is here. Education is our challenge, health is our challenge, and business is another challenge. So those are the things I'm focusing on, looking for people to help us so that we can develop our community and we'll be self-reliant, not always to depend on people. Yes, you've used the word sustainability a lot in your interview. Yes. So I want us to be self-sustenance. We can take care of ourselves, we can take care of everything. As we have the business, like two or three people can join together and they set up a business. These two and three people can another set up and have different businesses, which can help us. And even if you get a microfinance support, that will be the best way. You give us loan, you work and we pay you back. If you want us to pay, we will pay you back. And if you don't want us to pay back, we can also remain with the money and continue to develop our lives. So any organization, individual or any institution which wants to come in terms of what I'm explaining, we are ready for it. Our doors are open for each and every one. If I say our people, not only the Jewish people, because we are not here alone. If we Jewish people can take care of ourselves, what about our brothers and sisters around us? If they are sick, we are also sick. So we need each and every one to come together to help us. Internet is now the world is changing and 
If the world is changing, you have to also change yourself. Because I used, I quite remember from Mentes coming, I used to write a letter to the United States. It takes like, it takes three weeks. I said three weeks, three months. Three months? Three months before the letter will reach. What did they walk it there? <laughs> and come back. But right now, as soon as you type or you send a message within seconds, it goes. And if the person is on the net also, you get your feedback. Mm. So this has built a good relationship between we outside the European countries and those who are there. So it's a good idea if you get an internet here, it will give, it, give us a, an opportunity to communicate to our brothers and sisters outside. Mm. Because like the time you came, we were looking for a good internet. We carry all our things the whole day. We were not able to get a good internet. Until we went to Kumasi. Even at Kumasi, it fails for us, which is very serious. So if you're supposed to answer some information, it can take you more time. But if you have a good internet here, it will help us build the relationship and get information. As my junior brother said, it will help us to get information from our brothers who wants to come and visit us here. Even if you don't want to come and visit us, you can share ideas mm -hmm. through the internet. You can learn many things from outside. Yeah. Most of our lessons are now on the internet. So if you have a good internet here, you can learn more. You can even have a, somebody who will teach you not only Judaism, but any part of studies that you want to study, you can learn from internet. So if you get access to internet, and if you get access to computers, you can create an internet cafe, which is part of business, which will bring money. Like the district here, you have like about 175 towns surrounding this district. You have only one internet cafe which is not reliable, which is a challenge. Because of internet, people can travel from here to Kumasi to work on their so things. Just to clarify, because to get the internet, sometimes people will have to go, go to, to Kumasi, Kumasi yes. which is three to four hours away. Okay. So if you can create an internet cafe here, you will get money. And the money can be used in other ways mm -hmm. in terms of development. And for us, our community here, since we began, we have opened our door for people to visit us and we have sympathy for people in terms of food, accommodation. We show love to people. In my community, you have done it and you have not stopped it. Sometimes you go to a hospital when people are sick. They have been discharged, but they can't pay their bills. So when you see these people, you come, you sit together as a community, you decide, you write a check, you withdraw money, you go pay their bills at the hospital. Mm -hmm. So that they don't, at the end of the day, they go home. And this has given us a good name in this area where we are staying. Mm -hmm. If somebody is hungry, you can give them food. If they need shelter, you share with them. We encourage people to do Sidaka. So people who have been visiting us for the past years, at least they have learned something from us, how we are. Mm -hmm. If we are bad people, I think it has been spread. And if you are good people, it has also been spread. So. In terms of our Sidaka, we don't do only to the Jewish people. We expand it mm -hmm. to people who are around us.